Hey, this is Rene. Welcome back to another video on this channel. And today I'm back with another strategy test, strategy review. And today we will look at the reversal sweep strategy, which is a pretty simple um, candlestick pattern strategy. And we are searching for reverse patterns. So here in the background, you can see a backtest running already using this specific strategy. And here we already had the first signal, which was not a winning signal. So maybe we can wait some more time. So we see another signal that has an actual trade that we can look at. So what is this strategy about? So the strategy is really easy. So we are waiting for a specific amount of candles into the same direction. For example, here we have one, two, three, four, five red falling candles. And then with the next green candle, we then enter a buy position. This buy position has a stop loss, which is at the low of these candles. And the TP is a specific amount of points away. Right now I'm running it with 500 points points for the TP. And that's pretty much it. So here we can see there's another trade already. We had one, two, three, four, five candles that were green and um, going up. Then we had this one red candle and yeah, directly afterwards we enter the um, the sell trade here with the beginning of the next candle. Stop losses, of course, at the top of these candles of the whole candle pattern pretty much it's usually the the last green candle in this case but could be any of these candles which has the highest high and then the tp again it's just 500 points away and that's all there is about the strategy <clears throat> i try to keep it simple so there's no trailing stop no nothing yet it's just really this simple plain strategy here we can see another buy trend. This was not a winning trade. Then we see another sell trade, which was not a winning trade. And the thing is, because of the small stop loss, most of these trades will be losing trades. But you can see, um, if we have a look at the graph here for a second, if we just have one or two good winning trades, they can make up for five, six, seven, eight, or even 10 losing trades. And whenever you have something like this, it makes sense to test this over a long period of time. So you can see what is the outcome on average. Because when we are testing trading strategies, we do not want to look at one or two trades. We do not want to look at one or two weeks or one or two months. We want to look at the big picture. So we want to test a strategy for multiple months, multiple years, and we want to see if there's a positive trend or a negative trend. And if we see a positive trend for a basic strategy like this, then we might as well want to go ahead and add some trading stops, some more uh, trade management at a variable lot size, try to... Um, to tweak and track the strategy a little bit to figure out if we can boost the performance even more. So this is what I want to do now, right? So what I did first is I created the strategy like this. It's really simple, easy. So I let it run in the test. And if I speed the test up, you can see right now I'm testing Euro US dollar starting from 2020 up to November or end of October 2023. And um, yeah, I'm just looking at the graph. This strategy with these settings, um, yeah, it had good periods. Right now it's in a bad sideways period, but it's not like going down all the way. And um, this is always a good sign if you want to say so, because you will rarely find a strategy that you test for the first time with a settings that you chose in when you when you write the strategy you usually just choose any settings um, randomly and if these settings are profitable already this is really a rare scenario most of the time you will see something like this but this is not all bad so what i did next is i tried to play around with the settings a bit because we can see we have different parameters here that we can change for example, the easiest thing to change is change the take profit. Maybe the double amount for the TP is better. So if we have a look at the first test, we can see this made a profit of 130. And um, yeah, the profit factor is barely above one. But if we just change the TP points to 1000, 
and let me deactivate the visual mode and run the same test for the same period, just changed the TP points. So let's have a look at the test with 1000 points for the TP. So this will mean that we will have more losing trades, but again, it's not about one or two losing trades, it's about the long and the, 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 the long period test and the bigger picture. So before this test, we had a, a profit of, I think, 150 euro and a profit factor of 102. This time we have a profit factor of 1.10 and 600 profit. So this is already way better. So we can see if we just play around with the settings a bit, this might increase the, increase the outcome of the test dramatically. So in this case, what you should do next is just run a optimization for the strategy. And here we can go ahead and select different things we want to optimize. And right now I'm not even playing around with the, with the time frame. I want to uh, change the amount of candles that we need for a setup. So for example, until now we needed at least five candles. So for example, five red candles and then one green candle. But we can change this, of course. We can try it with three red candles only. We can go up to six or eight, whatever you like. So this is what the optimization is made for. So here we can go from three, for example, all the way to six. So we will run different back tests and test all of these different inputs. And it will, of course, make a different, uh, generate a different outcome every single time. So um, for the lots, I will... Yeah, maybe we can also optimize the lot size. So we can go, we can start with zero and then uh, go up to 0 0.1 and 0 means if there is no lot size we, size we will use the risk in percent so we will also tr um, uh, try to trade with a variable lot size of 0 0.5 percent so every loss would be 0 0.5 percent and it's calculated by the distance from entry to stop loss and then i also want to calculate um, or test the tp points let's start at 100 let's choose a step of 200 and let's go all the way up to 1500 so if i do it like this and run the optimization we will see a lot of different optimization results once this is finished but i will just wait for this and then let's talk about the results Okay, so the complete optimization is now finished and we can see the results here. So first of all, we have this uh, graphic where we can see the points. One point is for every optimization run. And yeah, we can see um, it's widely spread. So a lot of these runs were profitable, a lot of these runs were not profitable. So let's have a look at the, uh, the runs and the, the settings that led to a profitable or unprofitable uh, outcome. So every result above one is pretty much good. And every result below one is bad. Above one means positive profit factor, so there was a profit. Below one what means uh, there's a negative profit factor and made a loss. It's pretty much even, I would say. Mm, and it's interesting that all of the small inputs for the TP distance or for the TP points are super unprofitable. So the first takeaway here is that it does not really make sense to work with a too small TP. And I mean, it kinda, yeah, it's kind of logic because in the H1 chart, a 100 point TP is just not really a lot. And a 100 point TP would be suitable for a scalping strategy maybe, but in this case, we are more or less trying to hit the trend reversals. So it doesn't make sense to have a scalping TP, right? So the first takeaway is that a bigger TP makes sense. Okay, here we have a good run with 100 points for the TP, but that's really a exception. Also, if we have a look at the trend count, we can see that, um, okay, this is not, yeah, it's not super significant, but we can still see that six, four and five are, I think the best possible options that we have here and three, is not that good. So we should go for a trend count, which is at least four, I think. And then, um, yeah, for the lot size, um, we see 0 0.1 was most of the times better. So I think it's better to trade with a fixed lot size because a lot of the tests with a variable lot size were not that good. Okay, so these are the three main takeaways. So if we go back to the inputs, we should trade with a fixed lot size. 
And um, yeah, we can just go with 0.1, doesn't really matter. We can just increase or decrease it. And the trend count should be something from, um, from four to six, I would say. So in this case, six and four gave the best results. So maybe we'll go with this. So uh, let's go with six first. And then for the TP, we need a big input, something like, um, yeah, 1,000 might be good, 900 might be good, 1,100 might be good. Yeah, I will just go with 1,000. Even this was not tested, but it adds a little bit more um, uh, stress to the uh, to the whole testing process. So now, since we found settings and uh, settings that are quite okay, we can do tests again with these settings. And now um, we can have a look at the outcome of a single back test again. This time we use this trend count of six. One hour time frame still lots 0 0.1 and 1000 for the TP. And yeah, of course, we will have to do a single back test now so we can see what's going on. So let me run this test again to see if this, um, how this works. And I mean, we will know uh, or we know already that the outcome will be profitable because this is what the optimization showed us, but it's still good to make a single back test afterwards to just see how the... Um, balance curve develops and how it all looks like. So wait, this was the old testing window and there's the new one. So let's have a look at uh, one or two trades maybe here to see um, what's going on. Okay, so we can see now these trades need at least six candles. So one, two, three, four, five, six green candles and then one uh, counter candle in the opposite direction. Then we enter the trade SL is still at the high for short trades and TP is right now 1000 points away. And then we always trade 0 0.1 lots and then we just see if it um, will be a profitable or a unprofitable trade. And yeah, it looks like the first year here was not profitable. So that's actually interesting. And that's what you see in a single uh, visualized backtest so you can see where the actual performance is coming from if it is a consistent um, development in the balance and equity curve or if it is just coming from one specific event like one really good month or something like this so yeah let's just wait until this test is finished and so yeah here we can already see year 2020 was not really good, but starting from year 2021, there is a constant uh, positive development. And this is where the profits are coming from. So yeah, that's the outcome. Uh, profit factor is really good in my opinion, 1.2 uh, with 100% tick data is not that bad. Profit is uh, around 600 euro here, but of course the profit factor is the thing that should be more important. So now let's test this again, maybe with four, um, four candles for the trend pattern and then one reversal candle. Because these were only 280 trades with the six um, uh, trend candles uh, required. So if we go to four now, we should see way more trades. So I do not really need the visual mode, I think, because we already know how the strategy looks like. So I'm just doing a test now. And if this test run is finished, then I still want to test a longer period to have some out of sample data in the testing process also. And yeah, so here we can see that um, the first year is more stable, looks like. And in general, we just have way more trades, of course, because um, now we only need four candles for this trend signal and then one reversal candle. And before this, we needed six and one reversal candle, which is, of course, a really rare. And yeah, here we can see this looks um, better on the first glance, I would say. But let's wait until the, first, until the test is finished. There are still some drawdown or sideways periods, as we can see now. But the overall backtest, yeah, even though the profit factor is lower, the overall uh, backtest kind of looks cleaner. 
So what I would do next is to do the out of sample test and maybe test a longer period, like also include years from 2015. So we will do the same test starting in 2015 now using the same input. So four candles necessary for the signal and then one reversal candle. And now we'll test this longer period. And as a last, last test afterwards, I want to test this with six candles again for the longer period. So we have the complete picture and we know if this, um, yeah, how, how this would have turned out if we traded it starting in 2015. And yeah, this is again, this is a quite basic strategy. So there's not a lot um, functionality in the program at all. You could add a lot of different stuff like trading stops, um, filters, every, like everything you can imagine. And um, this is what I would do as a next step after doing the first testing phase like I just did here in this video. So after you figured out if a test or a strategy could be good or bad over a longer period of time, then you want to add some filters, maybe uh, some trading stops and stuff to figure out if it could increase the outcome of the program. But here we can see the uh, out of sample test already shows that it's not always performing. So here we have another um, longer period, around two years where the strategy was not performing great. So starting from 2016 to yeah, pretty much 2018, it was not really performing great. And then starting from 2018 on, it seems to recover and then it was way more profitable. So this is something you should then work on in the further uh, strategy development process. Maybe find some kind of filter to yeah, figure out what's going wrong in this period and to increase the performance overall. So here we can see if we do the long backtest over multiple years, it's still profitable, but the profit factor is way lower. So yeah, this is um, what is shown uh, in the longer backtest. And um, yeah, also we can do the same thing, same testing period now with a trend count of six. So if we need six candles for the trend and then one for the counter signal, and I will test the same again. And this will be the last test in this video. So I hope you, you were able to get a kind of good overview over this specific strategy and how this can turn out in the euro US dollar in the last, um, yeah, either three and a half years or in the long period in the last um, eight years, starting from 2015. And it looks like the six candles pattern is way more stable in the in the long run so it seems that trading less yeah look just is more stable than trading all the patterns that you get with four trend candles only and here we should see a profit factor that is way better but of course we have less trades and everything everyone has to decide on his or her own what he prefers but yeah the profit factor is way bigger if we take less signals so that's it for this video let me know in the comment section what you think about this and maybe I will make some more adjustments. You can leave suggestions in the comments as always. Maybe I will add the trailing stop and some filters and, th and then do some more testing with this strategy. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to your, uh, to your comments and I will read all of them. So thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful for you. And um, yeah, wish you all a great time and good trades. Bye.